Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you are tuning in, welcome to homesteading and gardening in the suburbs. I'm Emma from Misfit Gardening and today we're talking about why a mobile chicken tractor is better than a coop because chicken keeping is an incredibly rewarding hobby for the suburban homesteader and usually chickens seem to be that you know, gateway animal into, um, you know, really dabbling a little bit more in providing your own protein source on the homestead. And we've had some really great experiences as chicken keepers. We've also had some not so great experiences with chicken keepers. Um, and that's kind of why we did a, um, you know, a, a very honest um, discussion about our chicken keeping mistakes in an earlier episode. Um, um, you know, because we got some good feedback about that and, uh, you know, I got a couple of comments back from other homesteaders about they were really glad that we put that episode out there because it made them feel not so alone with some of the mistakes that that happen. Um, but this episode, I want to talk a bit about why a mobile chicken tractor is better than a coop. Um, so you can think about whether this type of housing is going to be ideal for, um, you know, your hens and your homestead. So a mobile chicken tractor is also known as a chicken arc in the UK and um, a chicken tractor is made up um, it's basically like a, a, a coop with a run attached that you can move around the property. Um, it's usually used to pasture raise birds for meat um, or eggs and uh, because you can move it it allows the birds to peck all the grassy goodness that they want. Um, I found that my chickens absolutely loved pecking at grass and all the bugs and stuff that were in there and obviously their poop provided manure for the lawn as well. Uh, a typical chicken tractor is made up of two parts. There's like a sleeping area like the actual coop area and then there's an enclosed run and some chicken tractors have wheels that make them easier to move. Others, uh, you know, you need two people to, to lift and move them and they're pretty easy to, to make actually and you can, you know, make a really simple A-frame a chicken tractor um, to move and you can move that easily around a garden or um, the lawn some pasture and you know one of the things that I really loved about having like a pen um, area for the chickens was I could put them onto part of the garden and I didn't have to worry about them kind of decimating plants that they shouldn't um, but you can move your chicken tractor when, you know, the birds are in there, when they're awake, uh, which is fine, but you might find it a little easier to do it when they've gone into the coop at night, because uh, then you're not accidentally trapping somebody's foot in there. <laughs> um, but it makes it a lot easier to, to move. And you can buy ready-made chicken tractors. Um, you know, I... I've seen all sorts of different types available to buy, and you can pick them up on, you know, online or even in your farm supply store now. Um, I was at one a few weeks ago and there was a bunch of chicken tractors in there, which, you know, three or four years ago, there was there was nothing there. So they're gaining a lot more popularity. And with that, you start to get better builds that are available for prefab ones. Um, whereas before you might have needed just to build your own, which, which can be kind of a fun activity. We built our static coop together, which was pretty fun. Um, but you can also get like easy to clean plastic ones, uh, which, you know, sounds a little, a little crazy having like a plastic coop. Um, but, you know, certainly in the UK, definitely, um, you know, worthwhile thinking about because you don't have the predator problem that we do here in the US. Um, but, you know, plastic chicken coop, I mean, you can just hose that sucker down and it's clean and then just let it air dry and you're done, um, which is pretty, pretty fabulous, really. Really. Um, for like a normal chicken coop, there's a lot of shoveling <laughs> that you've got to do and scrubbing and cleaning out. So I can really see the advantages of having like a plastic chicken tractor, particularly if you are a busy homesteader and you're working a full time job as well as trying to uh, run a garden, a home, do your chores, uh, go to work and somewhere in between have a social life. 
Um, so, you know, think about those kind of options when you're looking at having, um, you know, chickens, like what sort of time do you have available to do some of these activities? Cause you got to clean them out every week. If you don't clean them out every week, then you can have a buildup of disease that happens. We, we had an outbreak of disease on there and it was something that we could not get rid of. Um, we're now at a point where, um, we don't have our chickens anymore. Um, they they died. We lost them um, to we think Merrick's disease, um, which is a viral thing, and it's very difficult to eradicate. Um, so now we are not having chickens anymore. We're actually going to be dismantling the coop um, this year. But if we had a a smaller like a mobile chicken tractor type of setup then it would have been easier to clean and it would definitely be easier to um to sanitize and kind of clean out because you know there's there's the piece where they've got the run to be in and it's a lot more secure um so we could have really cleaned everything out without impacting the chickens uh too much with some um heavy duty cleaner or put them into a, a second kind of holding pen well, let's talk a little bit about why you might want to use a mobile chicken tractor. So, you know, aside from the fact that they're easy to clean, a movable chicken coop's got a lot of great advantages over a stationary coop, especially if you are, you know, like me, you're a backyard homesteader. So they are more hygienic. If you have been around chickens or you have chickens already, then you know that chickens are messy, uh, really messy. They poop anywhere and everywhere. And if you don't have chickens already, then, you know, just, just be aware right now, they are poo machines. They will poo everywhere. And if you free range your chickens, like I did one year, they decided that they wanted to poop right outside the back door all the time, um, which inevitably I would forget about in the morning when I would go let the dogs out and take a step outside in my morning coffee and then have poop between my toes, which was not fun. Um, but you know, keeping chickens in one area means that you will get a buildup of poop, which leads to bad smells and flies. And your neighbours are not going to thank you for bad smells and flies. Uh, so, you know, it's those things are a common problem for coops that remain in one area and that's why that you need to do deep cleaning um chickens also scratch up everything um so where we had our static coop it was once grass and it was it just was decimated by the birds they ate everything that was green in sight and then they just continued you know pooping and defecating on there which is what they were supposed to do and things got cleaned out regularly but we would have to dig out the stuff that was in the run on a regular basis um you know every couple of weeks it would get pretty bad we would dig everything out and then have to lay down fresh sawdust and straw and then of course you know a couple of weeks later the cycle would begin again and uh, I, I got to tell you, that was not a task that I looked forward to. Um, it was something that, you know, was fine when it was nice weather outside. So early, early in the morning during summer um, would be when I would typically get out there to to do it because obviously it was lighter um but you know as you're digging everything up there was just a big old sodden wet mess it was stinky you know and then I kind of hoped that that smell wasn't going to linger around and the neighbors were going to yell at me um so having a mobile chicken coop offers uh, some great advantages because you can actually move your flock around the yard you can keep them contained and safe from predators but you're not going to have that problem like you do with a static coop of where you know everything's just going to be like a big old mess and you're going to have to keep getting in there and cleaning it out i will tell you though if you have dogs like i do then for some reason chicken poop is absolutely the best snack ever and they like to uh, try and eat it so um if you're operating or thinking of using a chicken tractor design and you've got um dogs then really consider uh maybe picking up the poop from that area where the birds have been um so your dogs aren't eating too much uh chicken poo and then they want to give you kisses right after they've had that tasty snack um 
Moving on, uh, lower feeding costs. So your ch- <laughs> your chickens will eat all the grass, the bugs, seeds, anything else that is in the area that you are putting your chickens on. Um, I used to put them on the test bed and they would kind of dig down and eat some of the bugs that were in there putting chickens out onto an area of garden um, in fall was a really good idea because they would eat all those bugs that wanted to overwinter in that garden soil so I actually had healthier gardens when I had my chickens out on them because they would help deal with the bug problem. But with moving your chickens to a different location every couple of days um, you're Uh, providing your flock with new ground to forage and feed on Um, and because they're supplementing their feed with you know these things that they're finding out in you know the yard um, it's actually lowering the amount of the the pop you know the packaged feed um, that they're eating theoretically uh, I did have one batch of chickens where they didn't really forage and they just kind of stuck to their normal feed uh, which was sad really because we would throw in all sorts of tasty things in there and they just kind of looked at it like what are you I'm not eating that so I had one batch of chickens I threw in snails and stuff and they went nuts for it. They absolutely loved eating snails or um, the crickets that would come in summer. The last batch, no, not so much, not so much. Um, So, you know, do bear in mind that sometimes you do need to kind of think about the type of chicken because there are some types of chickens that do a lot better with small spaces and um, foraging than others. Uh, number three protecting your crops so an enclosed movable coop means that your chickens are going to forage without the fear of them destroying your vegetable garden or herb garden or the flower beds or escaping and getting into the neighbor's yard Um, chickens that are free ranging will get into everything and anything that you don't want them to be in and by the end of the growing season you can move your ark over to the garden bed and let them kind of scratch through all of that and that's really good like you know mental stimulation for the birds as well and some people even kind of uh, put composters you know or put them near a compost pile and stuff and let them kind of scratch through that compost because that helps aerate everything they eat the bugs and things that are in there and then you've got some you know really nutrient dense compost at the end of it Uh, Number four, cheaper coop costs. Uh, Chicken arcs and chicken uh, tractors are way cheaper to build than a traditional non-moving coop. Um, If money is super tight for you, and I know that for a lot of you listeners it is, there are plenty of plans available online for low-cost chicken tractors. And since they're meant to be moved, you know, daily, you know, at least every two days at uh you know the longest um there's there's not a need for a lot of bedding um you know and because it's a smaller space you know those those chickens are kind of going to be huddled together a little bit more so it can help um stretch your budget a little bit further when it comes to things like um bedding and because you've got a smaller space too for the actual coop area, especially if you're building it yourself, um, you can build in things like insulation. Um, so you know that your birds are going to be safe throughout winter and throughout the heat of summer as well. Um, garden maintenance is another um, advantage that I kind of threw on here. So a flock of chickens are happily gonna scratch and till the ground as part of their normal behavior and the scratching can help till your garden bed if they're moved onto that area they also you know happily provide manure for you um, which is why i i would recommend putting birds out onto an area at the end of fall to kind of clean that up because the manure that they're very kindly leaving for you has got kind of a chance to break down and work its way into that soil so your ground is going to be fertilized you know nutrients replaced and it's going to be ready to go come spring 
Um, on the backyard lawn, as long as birds are moved daily, then they're not going to dig up and destroy your um, lawn like chickens do in a normal coop. Um, but you are going to need to have enough space to be able to rotate them through on, you know, a regular basis so that you're not going to, um, you know, destroy patches of the lawn and, you know, kind of ruin things that way. Um, you do need to make sure, though, if you are going to put your chickens in a chicken tractor on a lawn that you are not using um, pesticides and herbicides on that lawn um, and you probably want to stop it using um, any fertilizers and stuff on there as well because you don't want to make your birds sick and remember anything that they're kind of eating that's going to end up eventually in your food supply as well so you know really think about breaking away from using those uh, hardcore pesticides and things that you're picking up from the big box store and breaking boredom i mean bored chickens become bullies that was one of the things that we talked about um you know animals being cooped up in with our chicken keeping mistakes is you know we had issues with um cannibalism happening because the chickens were bored and um when we allowed our birds to have time in an extended run the feather pecking and cannibal problems all stopped and if chickens are cooped up, they will start fighting and pecking at each other, especially if there's nothing for them to do. And a chicken tractor, which is going to be moved around, you know, daily, it's going to provide some level of mental stimulation, right? It's going to ch provide a change of scenery. There's new grass for them to scratch and peck up. And fresh ground really encourages that scratching and foraging behavior. So they're less likely to be fighting with each other because they're more concentrating on what's going on right under their feet. Now, building a chicken tractor, there's some great resources that are available, especially if you're handy at woodworking. And uh, some of these chicken tractors you can make for less than a hundred dollars, which is pretty pretty awesome. And like, I wish our original coop, um, you know, was that cheap to to build, but it really wasn't. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link in the show notes to the post that I wrote about um, chicken tractors, so you can check out that list of, um, you know. Uh, DIY plans for building a chicken tractor as well. And um, there are some disadvantages to using chicken tractors. Um, so, you know, like many things on the homestead, uh, a mobile coop, um, you know, can cannot work for you in some incidences and you really need to think about the, the lifestyle that you have, the area that you live in and what some of those challenges are. Now I mentioned earlier that there's plastic easy to clean you know ready-made you know you can buy them off amazon um you know chicken tractors available but here in the us they might not really work for you one because of being able to insulate it if you live in a really cold area is going to be difficult because you know a lot of the plastic ones they're molded they're very domed you know that it's kind of hard to pin additional insulation to them um but the other thing is predators and where i lived in new jersey bears were a real problem and predators might be able to get into a kind of a mobile arc design a little more easier and if you've not got it kind of pinned down thoroughly to the ground then they can knock that sucker over i'm sure bears can get into anything they really want to get into um really but smaller predators can be deterred using um, latches and the right building material so make sure that you're using like hardware cloth and not the chicken um the chicken wire because uh, chicken wire you know you can get a little trash panda's hand through there quite easily um and they'll just kind of like grab at the birds and kind of rip a head off and you know kind of leave it um so use the hardware cloth i know that the um the chicken wire is cheaper but in the long run you're probably better you are much better off getting that hardware cloth also if you've got pets too like dogs are very inquisitive around chickens and you know it's not unusual for them to be kind of pouring at the the coop to you know get a reaction from the birds 
and uh you know using that hardware cloth it's it's a lot more it's a lot tougher um so you're gonna get less um you know pores and things going through there and really be sure to use that hardware cloth to create like a flat skirting around the um the tractor because that's going to reduce burrowing around the run which can happen um and you know having animals um particularly chickens can can really be a magnet to certain types of pests um i i will be totally upfront with you one of the th problems that we dealt with and one of the problems that most chicken owners deal with is rats and mice um because chickens are messy and food gets knocked over and it's on the floor and they they don't eat it um, so, you know, that that can be an issue as well. And you want to stop anything from trying to burrow into uh, the run and that hardware cloth skirt can help with that. Um, chicken tractors can be a lot more of a seasonal chicken rearing coop. So if you live somewhere very cold, um, you know, you might just decide that you just want to raise chickens throughout the summer. And lots of people feel that a uh, chicken tractor type of coop can be more difficult to insulate like I said, it's definitely true if, um, you know, you've got a portable run that doesn't have any night, like, shelter in there, doesn't have a coop in there, um, or it's got a mesh floor, meaning cold air comes in, um, you know, a solid shelter is what's going to help keep your flock warm, but there are many, you know, models that are there for this kind of chicken tractor, you know, that are using, like, old feed sacks and things like that as, you know, ways to kind of, you know, keep the rain off the animal. But, you know, lots of people only rear, the, rear chickens for a small amount of time. And that's why these type of coops are really ideal for, you know, small-scale meat bird raising, you know, things like that where they're not in it for a long amount of time. But, you know, you can successfully rear, you know, birds for eggs in these type of coops as well. Um... Escaping chickens can definitely happen when you move the chicken tractor. Um, also, as can a squashed foot um, or toe and um, a very upset chicken. <laughs> Those things can also happen. Um, so, you know, make it easy on yourself and move them at dusk or at night and provide your flock with uh, a nighttime sheltered roost to avoid that problem. And your birds need to be moved over, uh, moved over an area where there are no poisonous plants growing right chickens don't really discern between a poisonous plant to peck on and a non-poisonous plant they kind of peck at everything um so if your birds are accidentally moved to an area where poisonous plants are growing then they're kind of likely to be eating that stuff and uh, you can end up with a bunch of uh, sick chickens so you know really be mindful of the areas where the chickens can and can't go um, if you've treated the lawn and stuff with any pesticides herbicides or fertilizers and stuff then you don't want to be moving your chickens over there either well, I hope you found this episode useful. Just a little bit of an insight into types of chicken coops that are available for you. And I would love to know in the Facebook group, are you using a chicken tractor or do you have a static coop? And if you have a, tra a chicken tractor, what's the one thing that you love about it? And what's the one thing that you hate? Let me know over in the Facebook group. Until next time, I hope your garden grows beautifully and that you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next Sunday.